This is plenty nostalgic. I haven't made anything in just about two years. And my chair is still as loud as it used to be. Hello everyone, it is Akatrios. And I welcome you to a new video. I will, before we begin, let's just say... Um, I am only marginally sorry for just disappearing. <laughs> well, thing is, with Corona going on and no cool releases for Yu-Gi-Oh, I've kind of grown out of touch with the game. So, yeah, I don't really care about the game right now. Not at all, I don't. However, if I do get to play in real life again and get back the spark in the future, yeah, I might play that again. For this channel though, the main thing will be stuff I uh, just have fun with and want to share with others. And maybe I'll do something on custom cards because that's, some, that's a point where my interest is nigh. I can do things on other stuff too. And one of my thoughts that I had lately is why would I just suck at one card game if I can suck at more of them? And that's one of the thoughts that came into the, thought, uh, into the decision of making this video on a, li a tiny, teeny little game which is still in early access and not known as uh, even closely as much as it should be. And that is Chrono Arc, the title screen of which you have already stared at for two minutes. This video is rather long, I know. I mean, I expect it to be. After all, I am going to record one full run of Chrono Arc. And these can range from 20 minutes to about two hours, if I do good. Well, let's just jump right in. Well, Chrono Arc, for starters, is a game... Well, I've already, I've already said that it's a card game, didn't I? Technically, it's a deck-building roguelike, which is one genre that had a lot of... Uh, installations over the recent years it's get, it's been a genre of a lot of popularity gain in the recent years and uh, a good friend of mine on twitter called abdi is the person who actually got me into this game by streaming it in a discord call and i decided that i wanted to play it too because hey it looked interesting it is a kind of sort of card game and I like card games. Right? So. We're playing as Lucy. Lucy's the main character of this game. Um, we go outside. We got the main hub area. We can interact with characters here. Do some things. Like talk to everyone we have. I think almost everyone we have. And uh, do the research thing. Which unlocks more stuff in uh, this just unlocks more stuff in the uh, in the run oh, this for example is an interesting skill I, I haven't seen these three yet because I just bought out all the uh, character skills this sure is interesting Anyway, yeah, so this is Chrono Arc, a deck building roguelike, as I said earlier, based on, um, well, I, I, would, I don't know if you can say that it's based on anything, really. Uh, it's just straight up a game. <laughs> let's, let's just jump into it to make, uh, to make it easier for me to explain. Because it's it's not as easy as it looks. I've already unlocked every character and I had have had one successful run on normal difficulty. 
which is um, shown by the golden backgrounds for four of the characters. Those were four characters I won the one run with. The starting characters are Hein, Joey, Miss Chain, Azar, Pressel, and Ironheart. We start with those six. Basically, two main DPS, two defense characters, and two healers. For the sake of this video, because I want to make it a bit more uh, beginner friendly and uh, show a bit of the mechanics that are. Uh, or rather, show a bit of the side that makes it easier to get into, because this game is incredibly intricate and, uh, and also kind of difficult. Um, I just pick my uh, my main starter, which is Pressel Ironheart. A very solid defensive starter, which can thrive on uh, any given DPS that which we'll be able to recruit later. And... Um, is generally, in my experience, kind of solid. Only difficulty could be getting past the first boss, because the first boss is still only with those two, and we get the third character right after. <laughs> However, that should not be as much of an issue. I am a devout believer in show rather than tell, so let's just jump right into it. This could take a little while because my PC is, uh, because my technology is not on the strongest side, but hey, it, it went rather well. As you can see, I am booting this run up in expert difficulty. This is also partially for me to see just how much more difficult it is. I have only done one expert difficulty run so far, which I, I think lost the fourth boss. That was yesterday, but my memory is really bad. And um, also for the sake of having a chance to make this video a little bit shorter. We're seven minutes into the video and I've just gone right into the first area. Now, on tab there's a menu and we can get a look at some of the uh, some of the things that are going on. We are two characters, Pressel and Ironheart, just over there. We can click on them to go to their menus. And there you see available skills, which is four, two basic attacks and two basic heals for Pressel. One fixed ability that is also a basic heal, which costs one. Got a level up screen, which we cannot access yet because we don't have the resources for that. And all that jazz. I'll get to the passive abilities when we unlock them. And uh, yeah, basically these are the cards we have in our deck so far. The starting cards is basic, basic cards. Ironheart has two attacks. One heal and one protect and one more attack for the basic, uh, for the fixed. Basically, fixed abilities are abilities we are always having access to. Uh, they have a two, two turn cooldown after being used on expert difficulty. but And they also cost one more because they're fixed. But at least we don't have to draw them, which is very important. So we have skills for those two characters. And we also have Lucy skills. Lucy is the main character, basically the character we are controlling. Right now she has one skill and via add card draw we can add more skills to our repertoire. And uh, via increase max mana we uh, increase our max mana. Currently our max mana is free as, impl uh, as uh, implied on here. And that is basically the basics of a menu. Right over here we see our item bar, we, got one, we start with one bread, one key and Lucy's necklace with one charge. On expert difficulty you are unable to recharge new Lucy's necklace, so you can only use it once in a run. On normal difficulty you get to recharge it after every second boss. But yeah, also uh, the characters have equipment slots which we can use to equip them with. So far to the basics. Now this shrine here we see implies that there's a boss right after. That's right there. I don't want to go to the boss straight away. Shocker, I know. But uh, let's just jump into a battle first. Now this is a battle screen and we start off with, with four cards in our hand and three max mana. We are against a haunt, a haunted table that has 17 health and an action count. Basically what this means is that every skill, well usually every skill, 
come uh, draws one from the action count here. I do the attack, now the action count is one, which means after the next attack, this table will attack us. Also, the attack, uh, the second attack of Ironheart just got bumped to two. That is the state named Overload. Basically, using using skills of one character makes all the character skills cost raise by one. Was that a formal sentence? I have no clue. This, however, has one exception, and that is skills with swiftness on them. Swiftness skills can be uh, cast regardless of overload. They do not affect overload at all. So basically, uh, if I played cards before, the uh, swiftness skill does not get cost bumped up. And if I play the swiftness skill, it will also not cost bump my non-swiftness skills. For this fight, it'll be rather simple. I just attack once again with Pressel, and this fight is over. And we get our loot, which is one unknown potion, which we do not know what it does, one bread, and two soul stones. Now, soul stones are one of the three main resources in this game. The first is gold, obviously, which is our money. There are merchants in some stages where we can buy stuff from. Soul stones are used to level, and credits are used to unlock. Uh, stuff in the hub Now that we have two soul stones, which is what we require to level up one of our characters to level two we can do as such and um, For this moment in time I would like to level Ironheart Which gives him access to his own passive which is in his case over barrier The allies are over yield Ironheart gains a barrier equal to the excess healing amount this also affects um, other characters, so everyone gets a barrier. This is, as I said, still an early access game. And it is um, translated from Korean into English. Which obviously means that there are some discrepancies when it comes to the translation. However, you can figure out most stuff by just trying things out. As for our first game, we pick Frontline Cover and Charge of Faith. Charge of Faith is a great skill with... Uh, Pressel and Iron Hard. And Frontline Cover is a good skill in the early game, which falls off hard in the later stages, unless we get good HP equipments. So, basically, Shard of Faith has the effect that if I have healing skills in my hand, uh, its costs get reduced by the amount of healing skills. And Frontline Cover creates a party barrier. Again, something that I would much rather show than tell. Then we get to the enchantment area. Can I access anything here? We do not possess anything we can enchant. That is locked behind these places. Not usually uh, guarded by enemies, but in this case they are. And we start with a charge of faith in our hand. Oh yeah, one thing I missed was these boots. Uh, with this button I can stand by to reduce all enemies action count by one and with this button I can uh, discard one card and draw another also uh, making th this also counts as one action however we will not be needing that we have cost charge of faith which taunts those enemies and creates a small barrier for Ironheart here then we discard one card and hope to get a basic attack to kill the knight and our turn and attack the table again did not work out so we redraw again did not get what we want like the party barrier that's a 14 right here this impl uh, implies that this is a party barrier indeed we get attacked we hit again oh. now we do any dice as you can see the early game is rather simple Kill stuff, get stuff, kill more stuff. Level up Pressel, I'll be getting Blinking Heal, which is one of her best healing abilities. Because it also has aggro control to it. And Shining Pillar, which is an AoE healing skill that also deals damage. It has a drawback, but it can also heal enemies though. Basically, you attack one target and heal everything else on the board. But that's fine. Because usually, you concentrate on one enemy, kill them, 
Then go to the next enemy. I'll leave a fist pump. No, uh, a comb. Bottle of poison. Huh. Now we get some certain um, AOE, uh, some certain characters. This could be extremely good. I'm thinking Charon. But we'll see. Now we can uh, enhance this item. However, it did not tell us what it does. So it can also be cursed, having a negative effect on it. I do not believe it can be after an enchantment, but I'm an expert difficulty, so I'm not too sure about that. Now, we can open the map here and see that down there there's still three spaces. So we can teleport to anything with blinks blue, go there, loot, and do our thing. More money is always great, more bread too. And let's just jump right into this boss fight. This is Cerberus, the easier one of the two bosses for this comp. There's also the living armor. I don't like the living armor, not with this comp. Alright. Now here you can see stacked action counts. Basically this means that this boss has two actions per turn. However, let's not get to turn with that, we just attack it. This boss, just like the regular enemies in this stage, is super simple. Just kill it before it kills you. Nothing too fancy. Oh yeah, Presence Passive Ability. Didn't talk about that yet. Presence Passive Ability is Prophecy. Basically, uh, instead of drawing one card, as we would draw two cards per turn, but instead of drawing one of those cards, we get to make a Prophecy, which means we are getting a choice from two to four cards, depending on her level, and getting to pick them. The card we pick may have an additional effect, like Blinking Eel, healing two more if drawn by Prophecy. On that note, I want to Blinking Heal you using a blue aura to Acro Control, which means the Acro she takes is going to be reduced. Not too good if the enemy decides to uh, hit a AoE ability. We are already making use of both these characters' passive skills a lot. And yeah, this is this is basically just hitting real hard. Often. Yeah, I wanna accelerate this just so cost less. You might have noticed that we have green bar and red bar. Green bar is also known as the uh, health bar, or rather the healing, the healing gauge. Basically, if we heal within the healing gauge, our heals are stronger. If we heal outside our healing gauge, the heals are worse. Which means that I should heal Pressel really hecking fast. It's gaining a barrier for it. But yeah. Again, this boss fight is hella simple. Now there's Black Fog, which means we take damage at the end of the turn. Not so nice. And there it is, Presso went into Death's Door. Basically, when a character dies, they do not die. They enter Death's Door, and if they are attacked then, they die. Making you a little bit more safe for some certain fights. And as you can see now, since we beat the boss, we get uh, the healing gauge healed after battle. Now for a post boss loot, this is a perk I have for already beating the game once. Uh, the golden skill book uh, is something you usually get after 2 2, which is the fourth boss. But since I've already played a lot of normal, I get this on 1-1 one, one as well. This is basically a rare skill book and this is a regular skill book. Some money, soul stones, unknown scrolls, credits, and a relic. What the relic does is something I'll show to you just in a second. After we enter this space here. This is one of the, uh, one of the rest areas and after 1-1, one, one, we get to recruit one character. And I want to recruit... Not easy. 
not easy a choice. Three of them are three of my favorite characters in the game. Which makes this choice super awkward. I need damage dealers and all of them, ex uh, despite being shown as two defensive characters, are really good damage dealers. I have never used Lian though. Uh, so, there's Azar, Leon, Narhan, and Silverstein. As you can see, I have already cleared uh, normal difficulty with Narhan and Silverstein in the same party. And they're both really strong characters. Really strong characters. <coughs> like, Narhan is a CC specialist, Silverstein is a multi-hitting uh, character, and uh, Azar is also a multi-hitting character. Leon is the only character in here which I have not used yet, but I think Azar is the best choice, at least for explaining purposes. Alright, now I already level Azar to level 2 because that's very important, having your main DPS, having levels. Getting the, the passive Illusion Swords. Basically what this means is the first skill each turn in my in my bar gets an it gets a buff when I play or discard it it uh, creates a zero cost uh, attack spell of swiftness and that is really good. We're just stacking ascending slice and illusion sword calling. Those are his two best skills. I know many people would like to experience that for himself for themselves, but I'm trying to show something here. Okay. Uh... Now, Dancing Sword seems pretty good. Guardian Angel is something I already know, that's decent. Like, it is a really good single target heal. But Dancing Sword is something I want to try. And when we get here, put the Dark Moonlight in this box. This is the Relic Stand. Relics are, are things we, get, uh, we can get in boss fights. We can place them in, in Relic Stands and they give their buff. Uh, individually. So, this this does, or rather, this grants us Diva Resistance. 50% of it and free evade, which is incredibly good, because we don't want to get debuffed. Look at this Diva Resistance. I like that. This is neat. There's also a, a combo attack skill book, but combo attack is pretty bad. So let's not use it. Now let's get to 2-2. Two, two. And we're small, uh, we're slowly getting into territory that I do not have to explain a lot anymore. Now this, at this point the game tells us that our max mana is low and we can bump it and that our, that we only have one card skill. That is fine. Like, uh, it is fine for, uh, for me personally to, to go this route. Because uh, having level 2 on my characters makes the fights easier than just having one extra mana. For me, personally. Now, this is one of the shops. And... I don't want to use this. This can be extremely good. But I don't want to use this because this is something you unlock later. So I take both keys of a skill book, I think. What does... Hasty heal do. Oh no, it discards a random skill. What does Reckless Charge do? It costs free, so I don't care. And to unknown scrolls, I prefer not to speak. Now, skill books are neat. They just they, they function a little uh, a lot like a golden skill book we had earlier. We just but for the regular skill book, we pick a character. Let's say we pick a czar. Now we get to pick. One skill from each of a character, except two from what we took. I'll be taking Storming Blade, even though we get one of uh, uh, Preso's best skills here. Storming Blade is the best fixed skill for SR, so I'm going to take it. Basically, what Storming Blade does is uh, its cost is reduced whenever, zero, whenever we play a zero cost skill, which is going to be his Illusion Souls. And. Uh, well, if we, we if we play this for zero, it's going to be big. I like this. I want to have this already in my hand. I don't like that we drew ascending slices our first card. 
Nope, nothing we can do though. We can just, we can always just discard it. Okay. Whenever you play an attack skill, cast a random, they cast illusion sword on a random enemy. And this holds for two turns, so no reason not to do it now. Healing Zar. Going to the next turn. And now we go for the full potential of this skill. And just defeat the enemies for our handily. So yeah, that's the uh, general gameplay loop. You uh, go into the places get your stuff and that's gone I randomly clicked on the scroll it was a lifting scroll and the negative effects are gone so this is just a good uh, good place for iron heart less damage for a tank I take it so yeah you uh, explore your areas Try to set up for the bosses, which is of course easier if you already know where uh, who the bosses can be. And uh, well, that's certainly everything. Now there's this artifact. You can use it to uh, basically basically we can throw items in it, and usually it eats them. Sometimes we get something out of it. I usually just dump this, uh, dump some stuff in it because honestly I can't be bothered to identify our potions. It is not a small play by any means, but sometimes it gets you good stuff, like cross bridge. I mean it's 10% armor and 20% weakening resist. To iron heart you go? Actually no. I want this on iron heart. Uh, this adds critical chance, but relieves critical damage. Oh, that's not good at all. But I keep it for the, for, uh, for the case where we can find it, uh, for the world that we find a forge in, maybe. So there's a lot of planning, a lot of thinking involved in this game. A lot of decisions you have to make. Which character to take, what to give them, like I'll, I'll be giving Azar two free attack calls. But there's certainly a lot of situations where you have to carefully decide what to do. Which is one of the things that really make me happy in this game. Like, look at this, we get Illusion Sword calling with the Illusion Sword's buff. And Dancing Sword. This, in my opinion, is ultra busted because this could just end the fight immediately. Yep. <laughs> synergies like that, and even cross character synergies, are one of the bigger parts of this game. And that's something I love. So, the Fountain of Oblivion has a, has a nice effect. Basically, we can uh, pay 200 gold to forget the character skill that uh, Lucy usually starts with, which is Accelerate, replace it with something else. And with Azar of a party, I'm definitely gonna pick a Reorganize. Reorganize basically uh, replace every card I played last turn, and since, since Azar is based on playing a lot of tokens in one turn, creating big combos, I do like to do that. Of course, it's not usually the best play, you also have to Keep in mind that uh, you only get so many cards per. Uh, you only get to play so many cards, but still, I take it. All right, leveling a card draw skill here. There's tactical plan, which is um, yeah. It's okay, but I don't like it. 
There's Healer, which is the Ironheart specific draw skill, which makes me able to draw a healing skill, that it, or rather to create a healing skill. Basically, this means I draw one card, and then I create a healing skill, which one of my characters can cast. Basically making it easy for me to create good pressel healing skills, and there's Surge, which is just add one specific card from my deck to my hand. I'll take Healer, because adding specific cards to my hand is not usually on my to-do list. Now this is another expert difficulty specific thing. There's a cursed enemy. Basically this enemy has 80% more, more health. Makes it pretty big. However, that should be no particularly problem for us. Just bonk it once. Bonk us. We bonk it again. Bonk this. Kill Crystal and that should usually attack Ironheart with Taunt. A crit on a Zar, that hurts. Dancing Sword, there it is. Costs three, which is a bit too much. Nice. And that should be. Yep. <laughs> yeah, as I said, the early game is rather simple, so it's pretty hard to uh, commentate it to be interesting. Two soul stones from a pile. Damn, son. Damn. Which means I can level up two more characters. Let's level up Azar once more, so we can get. Uh, Another setting slice in this case. Really good skill. Really good skill. And I want to level up uh, Ironheart. For Weapon Breaker. Also really good skill. This is already looking to be rubber, a, a rubber successful run. Maybe. Let's heal up Ironheart and press it real quick. Any tiles we have not been on yet? Nope. Man, let's jump right into a boss. This gave me the golem of a witch, and we get the golem. This is a busted opener. I did not intend to play this card, but I think I can manage to do it. We start with frontline cover. Trading one illusion sword. When we play Dancing Sword, basically uh, bosses all have some, or rather bosses after the first one, all have a mechanic. This right here is ultra busted. So all bosses uh, past stage one have a mechanic. And this boss's mechanic is that he buffs three cards in our hand, which we, uh, for which the red ones we have to absolutely play. Is, uh, or discard. If we do not, that uh, will result in us taking one big AoE attack. We do not want to take one big AoE attack. And the blue one uh, is a beneficial buff, which creates a skill from one of our allies, but with one less cost. As we can see, a zero cost Illusion Swords Calling came to our hand after we played for one cost. Or we also have one cost one. So, we are in this scenario right here, and we just hit him a lot of times. Also against this enemy in particular, I like having less cards in my hand. Because it, uh, because it means that I can uh, avoid having two Shatter modules in my hand. I get to create Shining Aura. Thank it. Now the Illusion Swords calling are also being replayed, which means we get more Illusion Swords. So this does not proc the double attack, which is good to know. Alright, but uh, you take 
this, you take this. Now this is a critical heal. Bombing the plate. And more damage, more damage, more damage. More damage, and even more damage. We could exchange this for a chance to get a good card. Actually, this card is getting discarded anyway. Okay. Now Pressel is stunned. I don't like Pressel being stunned. Actually, I don't think I care. So I just won. Yep, that was the golem. Massive. Yeah, that was a big reorganize over there. Get another uh, relic. Every three turns, apply enhanced module to. Whoa! This could be pretty good. This could be pretty good. It's only every three turns, but it's an enhanced module, which means I can create even more skills, which is good in boss fights for sure. Gotta see how that works. Some more stuff over here, over there. I take it. Uh, I'm not gonna hold on to the skill book. Shining Aura really do be the best skill in this uh, situation. Huh. Basically, Shining Aura is a one cost that makes all zero cost cards crit. Pretty simple. Pretty effective. Let's level press it to three. Already have one Shining Pillar. Healing Call is really good and Double Heal is really good. We're going to take Double Heal here. We kind of prefer a uh, healing coil. Now I can spend four gold to get another skill. Healing coil. That's also something I unlocked earlier. Uh, Robber early. You can upgrade your uh, uh, these things to give you that. And let's put a our second relic into the stance. Pretty interested in what that does. Now this area is quite the new killer, and it is rather brutal. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, what it'll bring for me in this room. Mad kid, don't need. I take one key and one pose. Let's see if we can get something for him. Or an illusion soul calling. Yeah. What are our skills so far? The worst one on here is the Shining Aura. Which is still good, mind you. This is the Forge. Basically, I can forge an equipment, uh, reforge two equipments to something else, or reforge an equipment with a golden apple. Getting golden apples is not that easy. <laughs> Let me tell you that. Since I want to keep a bottle of poison, because maybe we still get Charon after this stage. So I want to hold on to that for now. Charon or some other characters with pain debuffs ben really benefit from that thing. Because it is cost reduction and I do enjoy some cost reduction. Charon in, uh, in particular is a character I would love to take. Because I really like Charon in... Uh, in all the situations where there's a lot of enemies. Well, we'll see what we get. One goal before I want to get to the boss is uh, increasing our max mana to five. Okay, what is the sound? One ascending slice, one illusion sword calling, and a double heal. I think in this case I just take the weapon breaker and call it a day. I want to kill this enemy as fast as I can. Because it applies broken. And honestly, I do not wish to be broken. Uh, weapon breaker on her. She's the one that hits the second hardest. And next turn we get a zero cost. Sorry, I can't believe. 
Dancing sword, no. Hmm. I think I take it. Ironheart stunned again. This would be overkill. This would be just enough. That is rather depressing. I wish I played Shining Heart with more. Alright. I'm getting another sending slice, but that's not too great. Mm. That buff's still there. Actually, the sending slice is good. We just call Blighting Heal. Do we have slice on him? He hits us once, we hit this once, we hit this once, and we hit him again. Oh yeah, we got an enhanced module in our hand too. Cool. I already like that. So in order to get one more max mana, we need to get to level 5. Uh, we need to get 5 soul stones. There's another cursed enemy over there. I want to avoid that for now. Just go here and kill that. Ah, another one of these. Two ascending slices is not good. Take it. A double heal. This ignores taunt at least. So does this. Well, can the white being it? Now we have a broken effect. Broken breaks us. Pretty hard. But it should not matter too much. This enemy will go bye bye. Reorganize got the buff, huh? I think I need to healing coil. That's decent. Okay, it wasn't. <laughs> ah, these mice are pretty strong. Okay, I have to finish this battle really fast. Yep, did it. These mines are pretty uh, pretty resilient, so it's actually not that easy to get rid of them. But we can increase our max mana to 5, which is very helpful. Get bigger evade, but honestly, that that is forge worthy. That is forge worthy equipment. Together with Croth Brooch. We get an Ankh. Grants us healing power. Why not? 
Healing potency series is something that we do want. We get both of that. Yeah, she ain't getting CC that easily. Okay, there's still a boss over there and the fight over here. I want to see what the fight has to offer. If there's a chapel, we can still get on. That's another key. Oh no. The chart of faith is good here. Get weapon breaker for zero, I take it. Oh god, he gets free attacks? Oh. No, it only gets one. And then it dies. So that's another use of a lifting scroll. You learn something new every time. And that's one of the things I love about this game. Start calling. A condescending slice here, which is sad. They can do this. Mm, getting healing call here is probably good. Let's call this. Take this one and then kill this one. Yep, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this party a lot. Dancing Sword was probably the right call here. There's another uh, plot for this. We get the second key. Which we didn't get earlier. Because now I do have a money too. A safety charm. Diva of resist power. Sounds like something present one one would want. And now all that's left is the boss of the stage. This is going to be another easy boss, so I am not too worried. Also we just got two free uh mana. Okay, I don't trust this at all. <laughs> oh. Apparently there's something on, uh, supposed to be a this tile, but not sure how. No, yeah, that's the scroll I don't trust. Uh, what's this? Another scroll I don't trust. One of these could be an enchanting scroll, the other one would be a. Uh, would be another scroll. Actually, let me use uh, the identify on the bottle here. Actually, it just increases armor, uh, critical chance. Okay, that's the enchanting scroll. I want to enchant the ank. Minus one healing power. Okay, let's just do it again. Basically overriding the old enchantment. Paint resist. That's good. Which means she might not die if hit in death uh, in, in death store. Mm, I think I want one more card draw. I 
This is so bad. Let's just cake draw. Okay, it's, it's a Joker. Hmm. We organize this book. The Joker is actually bad news. Does he count as a czar? <laughs> I wonder what that does. I have to cheat a little bit to get out of this stun situation. Basically, each fourth skill I use... Why am I getting four options? She's never free, isn't she? Oh, double heal! This already has it. This already has it both. Hmm. This is the uh, this is the enchant thing, by the way. Because we uh, we replicate the whole skill. We also replicate the buff it the buffs it had. This is pretty good. You know what? For a create, I think I'll take Illusion Flash for one this. Okay. Now he's stunned again. Can we remove that stun? I hit him again four times so he gets stunned again, but I don't care. Okay, he's not no, no longer stunned, but we are encountering a different different kind of problem. I have a Joker in the hand. I have to play it this turn. <laughs> uh, take a shiny armor. <laughs> Gotta play it this turn. Because if it gets discarded, it just does it again. But if, if I play it, I still get to draw a card, so it's usually better to actually play it. Unless I get. Uh, unless I have someone manage to kill him in that time. Which is entirely possible. I think I do actually kill him that time? Yep. Okay. I want to try this because I am not sure I understand what it does. But what I do understand is we get one more character.
I do like me. Some more characters. Okay. We get Miss Chain, Sis, Hein, or Leon. This is a difficult choice. This is an insanely difficult choice. Sis is a really good uh, aggressive support. She gets to throw around a doll every time and it, the doll hits one more time. Which is usually small bit damage, but it's actually helpful. Also, having another healer around will make Ironheart's Charge of Faith better. Miss Chain would be a character which can use a bottle of poison we have uh, we have stored up, because she has a grievous a grievous burn skill, which we can see here is Engine Burner. Having this only costs one, while inflicting a grievous burn, would be pretty good. However, that is also actually not the only one. Or yeah, it's not the first on Fire Grot, which would cost zero. And we get actually quite a lot of leverage with this. She has quite a few skills that, that can inflict Grievous Burn. Then there's Hein, an incredibly potent uh, attacker. Not not Charon CC kind of attacker, but he is actually a very good physical attack. Basically, what he does is he uh, he attacks multiple enemies with his class uh, with his passive ability, which is Madness. Which, uh, when it kills an enemy, it uses the skill of that killed on another enemy. And most of his skills are based on... Why do I... Why can't I see this? I've already used that once. Anyway. Most of his skills are reliant, uh, are making the enemies weaker. And, uh... Just hit really hard. Sadly, he doesn't offer any, uh, good... CC or other any good ailment, which is kind of a bummer because, well, we could use that, but he is ex extremely potent. And then there's Leon. I have not yet used Leon, but apparently, Leon is a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent parry kind of character. Well, I don't know how to use Leon. Do I want to try Leon or not? It's the question I'm answering. Uh, I'm asking myself right now. Honestly, I don't know. Do I? Hmm. Not sure. I'm. I'm thinking Sis Chain. Like all of these are good. That's a general thing I really like about this game. All characters in this game are good at what they do, and all of them do uh, do uh, different things. But what do I want in this situation? Do I do I want Hein as my main damage dealer number two to supplement um, Azar? Do I want Sis as a supporter to make uh, Ironheart do more work with his attack with Charge of Faith, which is a very strong AOE? It's, and Sis uh, actually supporting both damage and uh, and healing wise. Or do I want to try out Leon? A uh, protective kind of uh, parry character which also deals a lot of damage. You know what, I think I'll take Leon. Because I never used her yet. Uh, yet. Alright, Grand Reflex. Leon is buffed with parry each turn. When Leon's parry buff is active, and Leon's countdown skills target skills targets target attacks an ally, Leon instantly casts it on a target. Parrying reduces all incoming damage by 35% and a healing gauge cannot be reduced. Parry is successful, remove parry and restore one mana one more mana next turn. Sounds good. This obviously means she'll have eight of countdown attacks. Okay. I thought my preparation is incredibly good. Okay, I'm gonna take preparation.
this is a stun. And this is an ignore armor, so this deals crazy damage. I think I'm gonna take a second preparation though. Not bad, but not what I want. Interesting, but I think I'll take a an actual counter skill. Now I can also use a skill book on Leon. Uh, okay, there's another there's another one of these. That's a protective party barrier. I think I take that. Also, I want to level him next to get another uh, charge of faith if I can. But looking at this. My characters have pretty decent skills, but maybe you don't need two of these. Yeah, my, my characters are decked up pretty well. Pretty happy with, with where I stand right now. But this next stage is uh, the one I died last time. I'm pretty much looking forward to how this will go. Okay, also since uh, this is not only a armor thing, I'll just give it to Leon. Okay, that's a cursed enemy right there, I don't want to deal with that yet. Gonna take a skill book, can I afford a key with it? No, gotta take it later. Toxic arrow does what? Oh! But it also inflicts the same thing to your soul. For two? Nah. Definitely gonna take a skill book though. Give to him. Is there a charge of faith? No, there's high energy emission, which is really good. Uh, Stunning smite was the stun thing, right? I think I want that. My Azar is already pretty much done, so I can afford to put stuff on other people. I have two equipments for that. Regular enemy. Let's see. Hmm. No use for increased morale this turn. I'll get protected. Okay. This for another. I take the heal of pulls. Another heal. Nice. And next one we have one more mana, which is great. And in turn, we lose a lot of our uh, stuff, but that's okay. I think I'm gonna take drop down slash here. Hmm. Definitely this, because this is good. Well, I did not expect there to be more enemies. Not that it matters too much, we're going to play Reorganize. Good preparation.
Yeah, the barrier is really doing the work here. I like this setup. I like Leon. Preparation is good. I think I want one more mana before I level up. Or do I go for one more card draw? My draws so, so far are really bad. Except for Reorganize, which is my best skill right now. He is completed. He only needs Shard of Faith, but I think one is enough. Actually, he doesn't need Shard of Faith anymore since we didn't take Sears. One Shard of Faith is enough. All he needs is maybe a replacement for Frontline Cover because that's uh, not as strong as Predative Party Barrier. She needs definitely a level up, and she does need a level up. So I want a third preparation. But maybe I can do that later. There's still time. Okay, there's something here. I think I'll take this. Blinking heal always better. Basic heal is getting a buff, and we got preparation. Exclude means that after I use the card, it's getting banished, basically. So I'm not too sure what to do off this. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with my calm. Man, this is this is pretty strong. Okay. Got six mana. Another protect. Okay. No threat. It dies for it can do it. Blinking heal of the red. Gets hit too and it gets stunned. Man, this is just too strong. <laughs> this is this is strong. This is just strong. I love it. Yep.
my party is pretty decent, but that doesn't mean I'm going to kill the next boss by any means. Also, yeah, I just ignored the, uh, the thing over there. I can buy a key. Let's see how the cursed enemy over here is. Can I have a lifting screw on me? Nah, search. Oh god. Colossal enemy. And he's stunned, and yeah, that's what I thought. Two cursed enemies, okay, this is getting difficult. Okay. <laughs> yeah, these cursed enemies might mean the death of me. Yep, that's game over. Die to a cursed enemy. And a combination of an AoE mage, which I couldn't kill. But hey, this has been a run. And I've played on experts specifically to try this out. Oh, and I'm sorry that the, uh, that the commentary was kind of gone at the end, but I told you, and I, uh, I'm, I don't know if I told you, but I'm not kind of good at this thing. I don't mind though. I had fun. Also, uh, just so you know, the first run is, uh, in the game is called 499. I have not played 515 runs in this game yet. Not nearly as much. But this has been my run for today. Maybe I do more runs in the future with uh, more uh, different comps, but this was just to show a proof of concept for a rather beginner friendly start of course there's uh leon which you will not be able to use from the start uh but three of the four characters i had in my party were early game available characters so if you ever pick this game up which i highly recommend you to do um you can do that and do pretty well with it especially on normal and uh, I hope to may have inspired you to check out a game you otherwise would not have. If you have been here for this time, for all this time, thank you very much for watching. And if not, well, you won't even hear these, hear these words I'm about to say. So I'm just not gonna say them. <laughs> At any rate, I hope you're having a good time. Stay Raven. Bye bye.